All right, here are today's top stories in our What in the World segment. Number one, Cleophas Malala, the UDA Secretary General, has seriously embarrassed himself on stage. I don't know what can be done about this video. <laughs> He went on stage and declared himself the MC out of seniority. He told the actual MC, Savula, to sit down that when the SG of UDA is there, he is in charge of the ceremony and he is officially taking over. All right. Then he started inviting ODM MPs to speak and the ODM MPs refused to come to stage. So Cleophas Malala had to hand over the microphone and the MC ship, if you will, back to Savula. Here's the tip sema tumeingia kitengo ingine sasa mheshimiwa Savula utakaa chini sasa mimi ndio master of ceremony nataka kuendesha hii ceremony hapa ni nyumbani na hawezi kuja kutupanga hapa ningependa sasa tuite sasa wabunge waonge sasa tutaita sasa wabunge wetu wa hapa uh, Kakamega na kutoka inje Nitaanza na mbunge wa lukuyani Mweshimiwa Jubi yangu Abia ugea ni kama hawa 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 watu wa ODM wamepanga sasa mimi nitasema hivi mheshimiwa Savula kuja ita watu wako ukimaliza reminds me of the saying humble yourself or <laughs> you will be humble Second story of the day, Jackie Maribe received a state job from Moses Kuria. She has officially been appointed as the head of communication at the Ministry of Public Service Performance and Delivery Management by CS Moses Kuria. And when I said that there was state interest in her case, people said I was being biased. And to those people I ask, why was Dennis Hitumbi at the court hearing? Why was Maribe in full UDA colors at the hearing? Why does she now have a government job a few days after her acquittal by the judge? <laughs> You people are wise. You can answer that for me in the comment section below. I don't want to get into a controversial topic sana. I already said what I had to say during that particular hearing. Third story of the day, the United States has officially deployed Marines to Haiti to help secure the situation. Now if there's one thing we know about the Americans, they don't go anywhere for free or for fun. They are there with personal interest. Initially they were in support of Prime Minister Ariel and the PM left the country came to Kenya seeking President Ruto's help. He left the country and on his way back he had to divert. He couldn't land in his own country. So the Americans did the math quickly and they saw the gangs overrunning the police and everybody else. And this guy is no longer wanted in his country and in any case he is overstaying in power. He ought to have held elections. So Americans are bringing in the Marines to force a regime change. They want to strip Prime Minister Ariel of power. They are likely going to negotiate with one of the gang leaders and he is going to be installed as the new leader of Haiti with the hope that that brings some form of peace they are there for regime change and anytime there is regime change and you are the facilitator automatically the incumbent the new incumbent becomes a collaborator they will be indebted to the american government that is what they are looking for i won't be shocked to hear there's a new military base in Haiti whereby the americans can do their own programs nuclear tests and what not so these guys are there to facilitate regime change Peace is not really what they are after. If anyone wants peace in Haiti, just remove this government. That's all it takes. Because I've come to discover the people who are against that government are way more than those who are for it. Those who are for it are around 20%. And they must all probably be government employees or affiliates or family members. So if the West goes in, we've been taught to gauge such situations with a very skeptical eye. Now the fourth and final story of the day, Kanjo are having it rough in Nairobi. It's either the people are becoming too rowdy or uh, things are just going haywire for them. Because I've seen a video, Robert Alai retweeted this, of Kanjo officials being roughed up and chased. In, was, I believe it was Umoja. They were roughed up and chased. 
and Robert Alai was very much complaining about it. I even commented on his Twitter and I said, why the selective outrage? The way the Kanjo are being beaten up is the same way police were beaten up during the maandamano. But maandamano, they were okay with it. Now that they're in office, they're against <laughs> their, their Kanjo Askaris being roughed up. Either way, here's the tip. <laughs> In my opinion, Kanjo will honestly never be respected in this county because, number one, they are not armed. There's a reason police don't argue with people. They have firearms and people tend to obey them. Kanjo, they move around with a baton or is it a stick which can actually be taken from them and they, it can be used to clobber them. So it is not really something for self-defense. It can be turned against you any moment. On top of that, the other challenge Kanjo are having is 5% of them ruin it for 95%. There are some very rude Kanjo. I saw somebody who was handcuffed to his lorry. There are some things Kanjo does and uh, it makes Kenyans, Nairobians in specific, to naturally hate them. This is a tough time in the economy and if you come across some financial hardship and on top of that you're meeting a Kanjo Askari who wants 4,000. In fact, if you look at the bribes Kanjo ask for, it is worse than what police usually request. If you do a traffic offense, a police officer might part with 50. That's why they are caught with 50, 100 shilling notes in their pockets by the EACC. Kanjo Askaris, you'll find them with thousands. Any small mistake, they want 3,000, 4,000. They will never take 50 or 60. Even if you're a taxi guy, you've just dropped someone, they want money. So that seriously needs to be looked into. I don't know if they have badge numbers. They need badge numbers. They need, uh, I've seen in the US, the police have cameras on their on their person. So we are able to review and know how an altercation went down and what exactly happened. That would be better for transparency. Otherwise, the credibility of Kanjo, it is very low with the people. The Kenyan people do not like Kanjo. And this is a thing that has been happening time and time again. This is the fourth video in 2024 I'm seeing of Kanjo being clobbered. Either they get disbanded, we get a new group which knows how to micromanage themselves, or they should be trained and well armed. But that's just my take, guys. Do let me know your own comments in the comment section below. If there's any topic I've left out, brief me and I'll do my best to cover it in the next episode. Having said that, if you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube. Search for David Wafula. Hit the subscribe button. You're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. All right, guys. Adios. Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adios.